Who is Bill? <laughs> Bill is extra. <laughs> Bill is that person that likes the spotlight uh, from the very beginning of my birth, apparently from my parents, even in the stories that they've told. Bill can be very down to earth and very calm, and then Bill can turn it up and, and go to that next level when I need to. Personally, I would say that I'm definitely sort of a laid back. I'm definitely a pragmatist. And then I'm also the, the comedian at times. I like to keep things light and easy. I'm not this overly serious person. I'm able to laugh at myself and do stupid and silly things. Uh, if you saw how I introduced my kitten to social media yesterday, his name is Simba. And I recorded myself in a dashiki playing the circle of life, picking him above my bed and introducing him to social media. And people have gone insane. Because I'll do stupid, silly things like that. So, um, I can be serious when I need to, I can be funny when I need to. I am an opera singer. Um, mm -hmm. I've been singing professionally now for 23 years. Maybe 24. How does one get into opera singing? Get into that. Alright, so this goes to that story that I've told a hundred plus times, truthfully, not going to say that, but a hundred plus times. And um, the short version is um, my chorus teacher, Patty Hasty, was the first person to ever tell me that I had talent. In the eighth grade, um, I would go to my art music class and she would always play music for us as we were entering the class. Um, and one particular day she was playing something that had words that I'd never heard before and it was classical music, I knew that, and it was a guy who was singing in another language. And so I went to her and I said, Miss Hasty, what is that? And she said, that is an aria from an opera. And she explained to me what an aria was, because of course I didn't know. She's like, it's a song that one person sings in an opera. And um, she said it's from an opera called The Marriage of Figaro by the composer Mozart. I remember this perfectly, because <laughs> I've since done the opera. Mm. Um, and I've sung that aria that I heard a hundred times. And so I kind of half jokingly said, I want to sing like that. Well, she took me over to her desk. She took me to the side and she said, you can, you have a gift for music. And if you want, you can go to college and you can learn how to sing opera. And she said, I would not say that to anybody else, but you have a naturally beautiful voice. And she said, whenever you sing, you always stand out. Everyone always looks at you. And I was floored because no one had ever told me that before. I sung in church mm -hmm. and, uh, plenty of times. I'd sung small solos, whatever. Um, but I didn't know that I was any good at it necessarily. And so I just decided right then and there I was going to be an opera singer. Didn't know anything about opera, you know, <laughs> didn't know that I necessarily liked it, but just decided that's what I was going to do. But what she did was she challenged me to listen to different types of music. Because you know, when you're eighth grade and you're a kid, you're listening to all the pop stuff. I was very big into rap. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said I was going to be a rapper, but so. Oh I, wow! Have you ever tried that? I did. I was a rap. I did rap. Um, I rapped for KRS One. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back in my day, it was Run DMC, The Fat Boys, KRS One, Big Daddy Kane, uh, LL Cool J, uh, all those guys. Um, and so I saw him in concert in Raleigh, and I staked out at his hotel afterwards and you know he was out there hanging and my friend Will and I went and Will beatbox and I freestyled right then and there and I did it for about 30 seconds and he was like that's good freestyle but of course nothing came out of it you know it's just a kid uh, he probably had hundreds of kids doing that for them at those times anyway but um, you know like I said she challenged me to listen to different types of music and just expose myself to that and as the cycle went, my I went I left that school, went to another school, and the course teacher there happened to know Patty Hasty. So Patty had told her I was coming. And so they just my teachers just continued to nurture me and wean me because they recognized my talent. And then when I went to another school for high school, same thing there. Uh, the course teacher at my previous school had been a student mm. of the uh, my high school teacher Mona Knowles there. And Mona I walked in and, and when she took Bolo and she said, William McMurray, and then I said, here, she was like, it's you. She said, I know about you. So, um, and after I got into college, I actually went to college for music education 
I thought I was going to be a teacher. Mm. For whatever reason, I loved conducting. Um, I still didn't know anything about opera. I still loved singing, but I thought I could just like do both. Uh, and you know, you get into college and you just kind of realize, oh, well, you kind of have to choose one or the other. So my junior year of college, while I was taking voice lessons, I, told, I said to my voice teacher, <clears throat> Dr. Tubman, uh, I think I want to do opera. And she was like, really? I said, yeah. She said, one second. She goes over to her desk, she picks up the phone, she knows a number, she goes, uh, hi, Clyde. Yeah, this is Louise. Clyde Hiss was the opera director of mm -hmm. the program. <clears throat> she goes, I've got Bill in my studio, and he just told me that he wants to pursue opera now. Yes, you're right, I owe you a dollar. And she hung up the phone. And I went, what was that? And she said, we've had a bet going as to when you were going to make the switch. Mm. I said your senior year, Clyde said your junior year, so I owe him a dollar. I said, we've all thought you've had the talent to do it. She said, but who am I as your teacher to tell you not to pursue something that could very well be your love and your passion? If you wanted to teach, then by all means, she said, I think you would be a great teacher, but I also think that you have a voice that can be on the stage. And so I've been teaching you in that manner. And I was like, well, how come no one told me? <laughs> it's like, again, it's not my place. I have to respect your wish, but I'm happy that you made this decision. Because I didn't get into an opera until my freshman year, and I didn't even have a role. I was an Indian in an opera, in an opera called Christopher Columbus, and it was a comedy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, oxymoron much. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was a comedy. Um, and uh, I just played an Indian, but it was just the fact that I was on that stage in costume under those lights, and it was like a drug. I was hooked. The very next year, I got into an opera again, and I got a role, and then my junior year, I got a role. I still had to finish out my education degree, so that finished that. But um, so I, I kind of took like, the traditional approach to it, uh, coming from somebody that has no experience to where I am now. When you're an undergrad, you just, you're what you call um, an apprentice artist, um, or studio artist, excuse me. You have no experience to very little experience, so you're going to sing a lot of opera choruses. Uh, and that didn't happen for me until I was actually in graduate school. Um, but then, as an apprentice artist, you uh, have compromise roles, which are just supporting roles in the opera. Um, you might have a one-liner to sing, or you might have, you know, two or three lines to sing. and. Uh, then you also sing in chorus. Then you have, you have, there are summer programs that you can go to as well, which I was fortunate enough to get in a couple of those, where you go, you get a little more intensive training, where you get coaching, somebody to teach you, make sure you're singing in the right style of the opera, your diction, your, that you're singing the right Italian, French, German, or whatever. Um, and then you might cover a leading role as well, so you get that opportunity to study and learn how to learn a role. And then um, the last step is what we call a young artist, which is just more of everything that you've done, but now you're typically at a company like the Lyric of Chicago that has a young artist program. I was at, I was in Miami for mine. And you're there for um, one to two years, and while you're there you get voice lessons, you get coachings, um, you do concerts, you learn uh, your compromise roles, you, you learn your cover roles, your larger roles. Uh, and then when the artists come in, if somebody's going to be late or not arriving, if you're their cover, you go on in their place. Uh, if you're prepared enough and that person is um, ill or unable to go. So for me, I took those steps of being a studio artist, an apprentice artist, a young artist. And then when I moved here and I finished at Florida Grand, I put myself out there as a working artist, mm -hmm. um, is what we call. As a black man, it was the last thing you would expect, obviously, because my teacher, Patty Hasty was white. Um, I didn't know any black opera singers until I got into college and I actually started studying them. And I was like, oh, there's Kathleen Battle and Jesse Norman and Simon Estes and, um, you know, all these great singers. Um, and th even in school, there weren't, a, there weren't a whole lot of other black singers, maybe one or two. Um, same thing for graduate school. So you knew that it wasn't, we weren't prevalent, but we were out there. Mm -hmm. I think now today, it, it's definitely, there are definitely a lot more of us. We're not necessarily being cast where we should. It's gotten better, but it's certainly still not balanced. Um, I have some really good friends that are world-class 
tenors who sing everywhere, and they'll be the first to tell you. It's like, yeah, you have us, and you have X, Y, and Z, but then there's A through W who are just as good, and for whatever reason aren't getting as much publicity. So are you from here, or...? No, I'm a military brat, so mm -hmm. I've been... Everywhere. Yeah, uh, I was born in Panama, the country. Um, my father's in the Air Force, um, and then I've lived in, I'm not in no particular order, Virginia, California, Texas, and then North Carolina. Um, and then my father retired, we built a house out in the burbs, so to say, and um, I finished high school in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then how did you decide on your schooling? So like, so if you're in North Carolina, you say you went to Florida, uh, how do we get there to there? Um, was any of this intentional as far as going to different high schools, different different, different schools, where people were, have connections already? Was any of that intentional? or No. It, so because I was on an Air Force base when we moved to North Carolina and Pope, they had an elementary school there, but they didn't have a junior high. So, relics Fort Bragg. Everyone knows Fort Bragg, North Carolina, big, huge military army base, um, which is in, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And um, they built a brand new junior high school right before I was to start junior high. So, I went to junior high um, for my fifth through eighth grade years, and that's when I met Patty Hasty. Because it was a junior high, it didn't have a high school, and the high schools didn't have ninth grade at that time, so I had to go to one other school just for the ninth grade, which was a junior high school there, and that's where I met Donna Kret, who was my junior high teacher, and she was a student of Mona Knowles, who was my high school teacher, which was at Southview, because then we moved between my ninth and my tenth grade years. Um, that's when we had built a house out into Fayetteville, and we moved into Fayetteville in, right before my father retired. Uh, and so it was just by chance mm -hmm. that I ended up at Southview, um, the, the uh, middle school and junior high, that was because of where I live. When we moved, it put me in another district of the, of the city, and I just happened to end up at Southview, which is how I, I got through Mona Knowles. Uh, in terms of college, you know, the same thing with anyone else. You look at your colleges, you see what programs are, are you're interested in and, and things like that. I didn't know. You know, I only knew about two schools in North Carolina that had really good music programs, East Carolina University and UNC Greensboro. I also looked outside of North Carolina at Westminster Choir College in New Jersey. Um, and I got into all three, and then I ended up getting a full-ride teaching scholarship. So I had the pick of my choice at that mm -hmm. point. Uh, and so I ended up at East Carolina University uh, on a music scholarship there, or on a scholarship there. And... Um, the teacher I started out with was not the teacher that I finished. My teacher in my freshman year ended up retiring after my freshman year, and which probably was a good thing because she was really old school and taught a different, a very different technique. Uh, so when I switched my sophomore year to Dr. Toppin, she would be the person that would really get me going um, in terms of getting my technique down and, and, and solid and things like that. And then after undergrad, I actually took a year off because I was performing with an opera company in Charlotte. So I moved to Charlotte to perform with, which is really the premier opera company in North Carolina at the time, and actually still is, because they're the biggest company with Opera Carolina, is what they're called. And I was touring with them. I was doing a show, Hansel and Gretel, mm -hmm. 125 times I did that show, because mm -hmm. uh, it was a big educational thing. But while I was touring, the people that I was working with, they knew I wanted to go back to, gra to go to grad school because I'd been talking about it. And one of them just said, you know, if you get the chance, look up Carol Freeman. He's an opera director, and he's at the University of Tennessee. And I thought, okay, fine, I'll look him up. I also had Florida State and Eastman uh, on, my, uh, on my list of what I was looking at. Eastman had the name, because Eastman is uh, in Rochester, New York, really well-known school of music, one of the top. Um, Florida State had nice facilities, um, a couple of teachers there that I knew, and then Tennessee was just, I heard this name, Carol Freeman. So I auditioned in all three, got in at all three, Florida State gave me the most money 